Hey folks, welcome everyone. I'm just gonna wait a few seconds here for more folks to join and then we will go ahead and get started. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to another Acta Workflows um, online meetup. Um, my name is Max Katz, and I had community and um, education and developer relations for Acta Workflows. Um, so today we're going to be, um, you know, it's another getting started with Acta Workflows uh, session. Um, we're going to build uh, a flow. And specifically, uh, what we're going to do is we will uh, get uh, all the members from a group and then we'll save the uh, users to a table. Then we're going to export the table to a CSV file and then email that file. Right. So it's a common scenario where you there's, you know, whether it's users or some other information, you want to email it um, in the CSV uh, format. So again, take the data get it into a CSV format file and then email it, okay? Um, a few uh, other quick things here. Um, so this event is being recorded and then a replay will be available right after we end the session. I will also publish this on YouTube and then you'll get a message tomorrow with links to YouTube and some other information. Um, if, you know, I always like to know where folks are joining from, you know, you've been to these events before, um, you've heard me ask this question. So again, if you want to put something in the chat, hey, I'm joining from this place, this city, uh, that would be cool. I am, um, again, if you attended my sessions before, I'm joining from the San Francisco Bay Area uh, today. Um, all right, now this is the only slide we have, but before we jump into workflows, um, you can follow our Crowdcast channel. Um, I think it's in the upper right corner, there is a button to follow us that you'll be notified when we go live. So you don't even need to register for events. Um, you will, when we go live, you'll get a notification. And also, you know, my email is in the first column there, but if you have any future topics you would like to cover, uh, please send me an email um, and let me, let me know. All right, um, let's see. Well, I think we can uh, get started. Okay, let me, all right. Let's see here. Just checking my other monitor here that I can see. Okay, well, um let's go all right so um so it says so the flow we'll be building is we're gonna uh, get users uh from a from a group in this case and we will um export users we'll save the users to a table then export the users to a csv file csv file yes and then send an email okay so let's get started and now as they build the flow i'm going to cover the various fundamentals of using and building with Octa workflows. All right. Um, so first, all right. So uh, I've got a lot of folders here, of course, but the folder I'm currently in is um, is right here. Online meetups, um, and this is the folder I'm in right now. So I'm going to build. I'm going to create a first flow. Now to create a flow, I'm going to click the new flow button. All right, and I just created a flow. Now I'm going to give it a name. And this is going to be uh, get group members, right? You know, it's it's a good idea to enter a description so we can just use the same get group members. Uh, and then I'm going to click this check but this uh, check box, and um, I'm going to talk about this in just you know a few minutes. Oh, members, if I can spell. 
Um, but what this allows me, it will allow me to see the history uh, of every execution of a flow. So this is very helpful for debugging and just kind of understanding how data passes from step to step. Okay. Um, so I'm going to click save. Uh, let me just. Oh, let's see the questions. How do we see the other screen? Um, I'm only sharing one screen. Um, I mean, are you able to see uh, workflows um, where I created a new flow? Oh, people can't see my screen. Not seeing, okay. Oh, all right. You see just a slide. Oh, I am sorry. I know what I did. I forgot. I forgot to move. I'm sorry here. This is going to be better. Okay. Is this better? Let me know. Yeah, the, the Gmail I'm going to use in a second. So it's not just a, uh, it's there for a purpose. Okay, sorry, I forgot. My bad, my bad. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and quickly, um, and quickly uh, delete the flow and create it again. Um, so, okay. Uh, but this is where I started. This is where I say, hey, I'm going to create a new workflow. Um, I, I still see some people say, well, only see your Gmail tab. Um, you should see, um, it, might, it might take a second to, to update, but you should see, um, you should see workflows now. Oh man, I don't know what's up with this. Let me see here. Okay, let me stop sharing for a second and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again. All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I know what I did again. Oh wow, this is so many, so many mistakes in one meetup. Uh, I only shared one tab. That's why we were saying Gmail. All right. <laughs> well, at least you know it's real. <laughs> um, all right. Is this better? Okay. Okay, good. Sorry. Wow. Anyhow, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So now you're seeing workflows, and I said at the beginning, you know, I got a lot of folders here, but the folder I'm in currently is um, um, so I've got online meetups, and then this is the folder. So I'm gonna create uh, I'm gonna create a new flow, right? And I'm gonna click this new flow button, and uh, I'm gonna give it a name, and so get group members. Uh, I'm going to skip the description, but usually it's a good idea to enter a description. And now I'm going to click this button. So as I said earlier, uh, this, will, this will allow me to see the flow, uh, the execution, the history of the, of the execution every time I run the flow. All right. But we're going to we're going to see that in action in just a few minutes. All right. I'm going to click save. Now I've created my first flow. All right. Now. Um, so the first step usually is how do you trigger the flow? So there are three or four most common ways to trigger a flow. All right. So number one is when an event happens in the system, right? It can be an external system, but it can also be in many cases, it's your Okta organization, right? Um, so for example, a new user activated or a new user deactivated, and there's a whole list of events, but, um, Basically, you know, if an event happens, you can trigger a flow. So that's number one. Number two is uh, on schedule, right? So you can periodically run a flow, okay? And that's what we're going to do here in just a second. And the third way is you can also call um, um, invoke a flow as a webhook via an API endpoint. So you can have an external system call an API point which triggers a flow. Now, the fourth way is a helper flow, which we're going to do here as well. So again, these are the four more, there are other ways, but these are the four most common ways is an event triggers your flow, um, schedule 
um, API and helper, right? Now, but in this case, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna say schedule in this case. Um, and I'm gonna use schedule, right? And right away it tells me, you know, how do you wanna set up? Like how often do you wanna run it? Um, so for now, I'm gonna change it later, but let's just say 30 minutes so it doesn't run as we build the flow. I'm gonna click save. Now, if you need to go back, you can click this icon and you can always go back and change how it runs. Okay. Um, so we we figured, uh, we set up how the flow is triggered. Now, the next step is like, what's the next step I wanna do? Well, there are two types of cards or two types of steps that we can add um, in the flow. Um, app action is when we call external services where I should just say, not, not even use the word external, but just say services, right? It can be any of the Okta services, but it also could be other services. Um, a function, these are steps that allow us, allow us to manipulate data. So we can create data, we can edit data, uh, and so on, work with numbers, strings, and, and objects, okay? And we're gonna use that as well. But the first step is, is to get all the, uh, users uh, that belong to a specific group. So for that, I'm gonna use an app action. Now, right here, you can see these are all the various connectors that are available. So there are over 50 out of the box connectors that Okta provides, okay? And um, to, to use any of these connectors, you create a connection to a service and you can have multiple connections. Uh, for example, you can have one for maybe production, one for development, and one for testing and so on. And I'm gonna show you how you create one, okay? Now, for this one, I'm gonna use Okta, right? I already have an existing connection to Okta. And then it shows you, once you select the connection, it shows you all the actions that this connector supports, okay? Every connector will be different. Now I'm going to search and the one I need is list group members. All right. And now for the result set, I'm going to say first 200 records. I'm not going to have more than, so I'm going to click save. Then it tells me, well, it has some inputs, which is required, and then it has some outputs. So here I can configure what outputs I wanna see on the card, right? And so this is called a card or, or a step. And I'm gonna click save. If you ever need to go back and decide, oh, I don't, I don't need to see this out. Choose fields. And then you can then check whatever fields you don't need, uh, you, you don't wanna see, okay? Now, so we need the group ID. And then I'm gonna to go to my Okta uh, admin console and I have groups here. And um, the group I need is right here, no code automation. So I'm gonna click on the group and then to get the group ID, you can get it from the URL. So I'm gonna copy it and enter it here, okay? Now, what's nice is that um, every card you can test. Right before running the entire flow, you can test each card. So there is a button at the bottom, it says test card. And I'm gonna click test. And I get five, uh, five members, right? It's the same, I've got five members. This is my group and I get the same five members, okay? So I've completed my first sort of kind of a step, right? First, I set up the flow to run periodically. Right now it's set at 30, every 30 minutes. Uh, and second, I've used my first card or as a first step is I'm retrieving, uh, I'm retrieving um, uh, all the members that belong to a specific group. And then I also tested the card, okay? Um, let's see, I see there's one question. Um, do you happen to explain what is required to set up the Okta connection? I recall seeing something about a secret key. Um, that's a good, thank you for asking, uh, asking this question. So where's the, where's the connection information, right? I said, uh, I, there's a connector, there's a connection. 
So the connection information is right here, right? And you can actually create, as I said, multiple connections. Now, I'm going to, um, in the email, in the message that I sent, I'm going to include a link um, uh, where you can see how to set up a connection. Um, it's it's straightforward. You do need a, uh, there is an API key and there is, I think, a secret key. Um, and it tells you step by step how to create a connection to Okta. Okay. Um, but so I'll include that link in the in the follow up message um, when I sent you know uh, when I sent that um, that email. All right. Um, all right. Um, okay. Now, so next we get a list of uh, users, and now we need to basically take each user and save the user into a table. So for that, because we have a list, we're going to use a helper flow right to take each user and save the user into a table so for that i'm going to create a helper flow i'm going to save all right i'm going to go back to my folder and i'm and i'm going to open uh create a new flow and i'm going to call this save user into table and i'm going to say helper all right now um, so again, we need to, the first step here. Now, a flow becomes a helper flow when the first card is the helper flow card, All right? So I'm going to use a helper flow card. And on the helper flow card, I'm going to define the inputs into the helper flow, right? Now, in this example, I'm going to say that the input that I want the, um, the main flow to pass is going to be user. Right. And now what's important is that we want to make the type object. Right. So you can see there's a little A, uh, and then this is how you set a type um, for a field. I'm going to make this to be uh, an object. Okay. Now, this is already enough for me to test to make sure that the user is passing to helper flow. But let's see how we can test this. I'm going to go back. To my main flow and i'm going to open it right and now i'm going to add a step or a card which calls the helper flow and to do that uh, it's a function and it is available in the list category right and scroll down it's called for each it says process items in the list by calling a flow for each item right that's exactly what i want all right and now it's asking me, what's the list? Well, I've got the list here. Now, how do you pass data from card to card is that you take the field and you connect it like this, all right? This is probably one of my favorite capabilities in workflows is that this ability to pass data from card to card. Uh, and then it's asking me, well, and which helper flow would you like to run? I'm gonna click choose flow and I'm gonna scroll down to my folder and I'm going to select the helper flow that I just created, right? And now, I don't know if you saw, I just, you know, but this field was loaded right here. It says with the following values, okay? So I'm going to open the helper flow. If, if you remember, we just created this input. Now, the inputs here are based on what we set in helper flow. Right. So if I had multiple inputs into the helper flow, those inputs would show would be shown here. So again, these values are being read from the helper flow. Right. And now I'm gonna use this drop down and I'm gonna this is the information from the list. And I'm gonna say, okay, so which value from the list I want to pass into the helper flow? And because they selected user, I just want to pass the entire user. Now you could pass only a partic particular field or field, but I'm passing the entire user. I'm gonna say item, all right? And I'm gonna save. And this is already enough for me to test the flow and just see what data I get into the helper flow. So I'm gonna turn this on. Uh, there is flow is off, I'm gonna turn this on. And notice right, right away, it actually says it's gonna run in about nine minutes right, which is like 10.30 Pacific time. 
Now, what I'm going to do is quickly, I'm actually going to turn this off and I'm going to come back to this. Uh, this way, I don't need to worry about the counter. Um, I'm going to do this. All right. And I'm, you can always, of course, add it back. I'm going to turn it back on. All right. I'm going to go back to the helper flow and I'm going to turn this flow on as well. And now I'm going to ready to run. So to test the flow, I'm going to click the run button. As you can see, it shows me how data is passed from card to card. Now, this is just one run, which makes sort of sense, right? Because it's the main flow, but the helper flow should run five times for each user, right? And then we can see every execution, right? And so this indicates, okay, this works because I can see the data that's being passed. Um, I can click on these two arrows to expand and see Oh, this is the information from the user that's being passed into the helper flow. Um, and so we can see this is Stella and all the information. So I got the helper flow working. Now I need to do a little bit more work, but I know that my main flow runs, it calls the helper flow, and then the helper flow runs five times. All right, let's continue building the helper flow here. Um, so next, uh, if you saw the information, it's a JSON object that can go back. It's a JSON object. And now I want to extract three fields, the first name, the last name, uh, and the email, because that's the information that I want to save into a table. So I'm going to use a card from the function, uh, from the functions category. Um, and then I'm going to, it's in the object category and it's called get multiple. Now, what it allows to do is it takes a JSON object and allows to extract keys that you specify. Okay, now, so we're gonna take user and connect it. And now we need to specify the keys. And so the first key is first name. Now it's important the name matches exactly as it says in, in JSON. Like I've made this mistake numerous times, so I'll put lowercase n for name and then you won't get anything, all right? So, and then uh, last name, and then email, all right? Um, we can now test this. Um, we can test the flow, but we can also test just the card. So let's see, let's test just the card. I'm gonna actually take this JSON and copy the clipboard and go back, and I'm gonna test this card. And I'm going to paste the JSON um, so here and click test. And we can see that it extracted those three fields. All right. If I wanted, I can run this entire flow also. I'm going to click run. This is going back to the main flow. This is my second execution. And switching to history, I have five more runs. But now I can see that. Now I can see the information from the second card. So I know that this is now working as well. All right. The next step is we need to create a table where we're going to save it. So I'm going to exit. Now a table in workflows is a is a storage. It's a it's a fast but sort of temporary storage. Like it's not a database that you should just persist data there and keep it forever. Uh, it's it's not really meant for that. But it's a it's a storage that allows you to keep data between flow runs, for example, or if you're one flow and you need to create data for another flow. So it's kind of a, like a fast cache in a way. Um, so I'm going to go to tables and I'm going to create a new table. Um, and I'm going to create a new column. So first is first name. Um, and then I'm going to click add another field. Then I'm going to say uh, last name, another, and email, and create, right? So I've created three columns, All right? Let's go back. Let's actually open this table in the new tab. Oh, I didn't give it a name. All right, I got user table. Okay, go back and Let's open in a new tab. All right. 
And let's go back to the flow. All right, helper flow. So now I need the next step is I need to save data into this table. So it's a function again, and then uh, it's in the tables category. And then the one I need is create row. It's asking me uh, the table name. So I'm going to click choose table. I'm going to scroll down and that's the table. Right. And I'm going to save. And now it's asking me which fields for inputs do you want to show. In this example, I want to show all of them. Right. And now I can map, take the first name and map it connected, last name and email. Right. If you want to, you can test this card also just to create row. You can click and you can enter some max. Right, just to make sure that the data is saved into a table, click test. And uh, this is just the row ID. If I go to my table, hit refresh. And we can see the information was saved. All right. Now I'm going to delete all the rows. All right. So, um, so we got this working. So the helper flow extracts the data from a user and then saves into a table. Right. We're almost there. Um, now we need to go back to the main flow. So once we have a data in in the in the table, we can extract the data uh, into a CSV file. Okay, so notice again, we get all the users, we run and save the data into a table. And then the next step is we can need to save the information from a table into a CSV file or export. So it's again, it's a function. And then we go to tables and then export to CSV. And we need to select the same table because that's where our information will be. Right, and save. And um, it's asking me which inputs you would like to have enabled. Well, I don't need the search here. I don't need this. Um, I just need the file name, which is required. So I'm going to say users.csv and then the delimiter, right? Um, okay. And the next step is um, we need to now send an email. Right. So now this is going to be because it's calling a service, right? It's going to be an action. And I'm going to use Gmail. Okay. And again, these are all the actions which are available from the Gmail connector. The one I need is send email with attachment. Okay. Now you can see there are also a lot of fields here. There's from CC, BCC. I don't need, I don't need them. So I'm going to click the, the gear. And I'm going to say choose fields and I say I don't need these fields right now, right? But I do want to keep the subject and the body. All right. Now we talked about you know connector and then connections. So I'm actually going to show you how to create a new connection for Gmail. Now you can see I have uh, multiple connections to Gmail, right? So there's uh, now if you didn't have any connections, so you of course the card will tell you well you need to create a connection before you can use the card. But you can always create a connection even if you have one. I'm going to click New Connection. It's not, let me see here. Hmm. Well, let me save. Why it's not letting me? Okay, well, let me let me enter my um, information and I'll create a new one. Um, so this is um, email with users. Now for the body, so I could type the body right here, right? But if I need to have a little more flexibility, what I could do is I could use another card called Compose. Now, um, I've been adding cards here, like the last one, but I can also add cards in the middle, right? If you click this, uh, plus, um, and then the calculator is for functions. And then most popular, there's Compose. 
it's uh, let me see why for some reason I think I need to save. That's why it's not letting me create. Okay. Um, let's just quickly CSV and then so the file content. All right, let me save. It's just not letting me for some reason add cards. Okay. Compose. Okay, here we go. Uh, compose. So I'm gonna say hi. Say please check the attached file. And I'm gonna take the output and connect it to the body, all right? Now, and again, this is the file content. Now, going back to the connection, let's see, I'm gonna click new connection, and I don't understand why it's not, why it's not letting me, why it's not working. Well, let's, let me reload this. This is so strange. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, so this is how you would create a connection. Now, every connector is going to be a little bit different, right? So this is for Gmail. You know, some other connectors will ask you to enter an API key or, or something along those lines. I'm going to create Gmail. Let's call this, I don't know how many I have. Let's call it five. I'm going to click create. And then I'm sure you've seen this kind of setup before. I'm going to say, can Okta workloads access my Gmail? I'm going to say, this is the account. And it's asking me, like telling me which permissions it needs. And I'm going to say allow. All right. And I've created right here. Now it says Gmail 5. That's the connection you created. So that's how you would create a connection for at least uh, Gmail. All right. Well, I think we're ready to run this now. Um, so. Um, Let's see. I'm going to click run. All right. So this is the main flow running. It called the helper flow. We save the information to a table, then export it. And let's go to my table. I'm sorry, table is right here. Oh, let's see. Oh. You know what? I didn't save this. Okay. Let's do this again. I didn't save the file. Let's run this again. Um, this is the main flow. I know I'm switching between tabs. I'm sorry. Uh, and this is the history. All right. Let's go to table, refresh. Okay. Here we go. And those five users now, this, um, and now the Gmail, right? You were wondering, maybe like I was just sharing the Gmail window. Well, uh, I wanted to show you this. So the first run is not going to have anything. It's actually empty, right? Because it didn't save the helper flow. Um, so we don't care about that. But this is the one that's working. Let's see here. And you can see those uh, users were exported, right? And we can see the five users. Okay. Um, so now if I run this again, right? If I run this again, what's gonna happen is that I'm actually gonna end up with, with 10 users, okay? Because the first five are still there. So what I need to do is I need to clear the table before I run this flow. And to do that, um, at the beginning, I'm going to add another card from table called clear table and i'm going to choose a table and go to my folder and say every time you run this let's clear our sort of cache right because we're going to have new users um okay and save so save this and let's run. All right, and, and you can see how the flow also the the this execution history view kind of moves as the each card is being executed. Now, again, I, I said we're going to look at this, um, but you can see how data uh, is passed from from card to card. 
right, for every every execution. And so if you wanted to go back and see, okay, let me see what didn't work here, then you can go back to this execution and kind of see, okay, something, you know, maybe didn't work here, and this really helps you kind of a, sort of debug and, and and understand what the flow is doing, right? But let's go to, and then this is the message, right? And it worked fine because we deleted the previous users, right? And so we only have five here, all right? Oh, let's see, what else? Um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. I um, I apologize, we ran a little over time. It's my, the, the sharing at the beginning. Uh, but that's sort of um, all I um, wanted to show you. Let me see if there are any, any questions. Okay, I don't see any questions, but now this is a good time to ask um, to ask me questions. Well, I forgot. Well, we we removed the schedule, but let's let's add it back, right? And so we can now go back to uh, add event and do schedule, and maybe we'll see every five minutes, right? And save. Now we can see that it's going to run at um, you know 10 10 a, 10 40 a.m. Pacific time. So it's in about two minutes. It's going to run uh, again. So if you want to stick for another two minutes, if you have any questions, we can see uh, how the flow will uh, will run. But I'll take some questions. So there's a question: Can both flows be combined into just one flow? Um, not today. Uh, if you're using a list you need to have a helper flow to process the list so um so yeah today you need two flows if you have a list and you need to process the list okay um let's see here um is there any place to see recorded past meetups so absolutely yes you can view all the previous meetups uh, on the Crowdcast page, um, on our Crowdcast page. And um, let me see if I can, can I share? Oh, no. Um, so I can put a link um, at the end of once the session as I'll put it in the chat, but if you go to Crowdcast and then Acta Workflows, uh, you'll see all the previous, um, all the previous um, replays. So let me, I can do it quickly, Crowdcast. the workflow so i think this should be the link if it's clear yeah this should be the link uh and then the question are there sample workflows pretty um encompassing what you just covered um so yeah there so there are a lot of um you know build your first flow sessions um you know i think every session there is a different flow that i build so at a high level i cover similar uh, similar topics, kind of the fundamentals, uh, but you just, um, it's a different flow. And also the same videos are also available on the YouTube channel. So on the Okta YouTube channel, there's a playlist for Okta workflows and then you can find those videos there as well. But also there are also other videos which are not uh, from the online, uh, online meetups. Let's see, I think, Um, oh, I think I sent the link to everyone, but let me try this again. Um, this, so this is the octa. This is the link. So let let me know if you're able to see the link. Um, but I think every message goes to everyone. Um, all right. Oh, actually, our flow ran because we're at already four minutes here. Um, so let's see if we've got a new email. All right, and we did. So this is the email we just zero minutes ago, right? This is the new email. Um, this is the email that um, was sent as part of the schedule run, okay? Uh, and we can see that it's going to run again in about four minutes. Um, so, William, I see, you still don't see the link. Um, I 
I'm not sure why. Um, but if you go, so I, I'll include the link in the message, but if you go to crowdcast.io and then slash at Okta Workflows, uh, you will, um, you should see it. Now, also, you probably received an email that we're, you know, before the event started, it says, hey, the meetup is about to start. So you can find the link there as well and that email. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, sometimes refreshing the page um, works. Um, so, all right. Well, very cool. Let me go back to, uh, yes, um, reboot always works. That's, that, that's true, or a refresh. Okay, let me move this slide back here. All right. Um, so again, thank you for joining. And I apologize for the for the sharing hiccups, um, but um, I still was able to show everything that I wanted to show. Um, so if you have any questions, my email is right there. Um, I will, you know, I know there's one question where I'll add a link um, on how to set up the Okta connection and I'll include it in the message, but I'll also put a link right here in the chat. So this chat is lives um, as long as the event is there. So it's going to be there if you come back tomorrow or in, in three months. Um, and um, yeah, any questions, shoot me an email and um, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.